What is free cash flow? Let's talk about it on Kyle Talks Money. Free cash flow represents the cash a company generates after accounting for cash outflows to support operations and maintain its capital assets. Unlike earnings or net income, free cash flow is a measure of profitability that excludes the non-cash expenses of the income statement and includes spending on equipment and assets as well as changes in working capital from the balance sheet. Interest payments are excluded from the general accepted definition of free cash flow. Investment bankers and analysis who need to evaluate a company's expected performance with different capital structures will use variations of free cash flow like free cash flow from the firm and free cash flow to equity, which are adjusted for interest payments and borrowing. Similar to sales and earnings, free cash flow is often evaluated on a per share basis to evaluate the effects of dilution. First, we gotta understand what free cash flow is. It's the cash flow available for the company to repay creditors or pay dividends and interest to investors. Some investors prefer to use free cash flow or free cash flow per share over earnings or earnings per share as a measure of profitability because these metrics remove non-cash items from the income statement. However, because free cash flow accounts for investment in property, plants, and equipment, it can be lumpy and uneven over time. So what are some of the benefits of free cash flow? Because free cash flow accounts for changes in working capital, it can provide important insights into the value of a company and the health of its fundamental trends. A decrease in accounts payable could mean that vendors are requiring faster payments. A decrease in accounts receivable could mean the company is collecting cash from its customers quicker. An increase in inventory could indicate a building stockpile of unsold products. Including working capital as a measure of profitability provides an insight that is missing from the income statement. For example, assume that a company had about $50 million per year in net income each year for the last decade. On the surface, that seems stable. But what if the free cash flow has been dropping over the last two years as inventories were rising, customers started to delay payments, and vendors began demanding faster payments from the firm? In this situation, free cash flow would reveal a serious financial weakness that wouldn't have been apparent from the examination of the income statement alone. Free cash flow is also helpful as a starting place for potential shareholders or lenders to evaluate how likely the company will be able to pay their expected dividends or interests. If the company's debt payments are deducted from free cash flow to the firm, a lender would have a better idea of the quality of cash flows available for additional borrowing. Similarly, shareholders can use free cash flow minus interest payments to consider the expected stability of future dividend payments. But of course, there are limitations of free cash flow. Imagine a company has EBITDA of $1 million in a given year. Also, assume that this company has had no changes in working capital, current assets minus current liabilities, but they bought new equipment worth $800,000 at the end of the year. The expense of the new equipment will be spread out over time via depreciation on the income statement, which evens out the impact on earnings. However, because free cash flow accounts for the cash spent on new equipment in the current year, the company will report $200,000 in free cash flow on $1 million in EBITDA that year. If we assume that everything remains the same and there are no further equipment purchases, EBITDA and free cash flow will be equal again the next year. In this situation, investor will have to determine why free cash flow dips so quickly one year only to return to previous levels, and if that change is likely to continue. Additionally, understanding the depreciation method being used will garner further insight. For example, net income and free cash flow will differ based on the amount of depreciation taken per year of the asset's useful life. If the asset is being depreciated using the book depreciation method over a useful life of 10 years, then net income will be lower than free cash flow by $80,000 for each year under the asset is fully depreciated. Alternatively, if the asset is being depreciated using the tax depreciation method, the asset will be fully depreciated in that year it was purchased, resulting in net income equaling free cash flow in subsequent years. While free cash flow is a useful tool, it's not subject to the same financial disclosure requirements as other line items in the financial statement. This is unfortunate because if you adjust for the fact that capital expenditure can make the metric a little lumpy, free cash flow is a good double check on a company's reported profitability. Although the effort is worth it, not all investors have the background knowledge or are willing to dedicate the time to calculate the number manually. Remember, free cash flow is an important financial metric because it represents the actual amount of cash at a company's disposal. A company with consistently low or negative free cash flow might be forced into costly rounds of fundraising in an effort to remain solvent. Similarly, if a company has enough free cash flow to maintain its current operations, but not enough free cash flow to invest in growing its business, that company might eventually fall behind its competitors. For yield-oriented investors, free cash flow is also important for understanding the sustainability of a company's dividend payments, as well as the likelihood of a company raising its dividend in the future. So what are your thoughts? Comment below. And as always, take care of your money.